Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Living in Denver. My name is Adam, and today we're gonna be exploring a southwestern part of Denver known as Ken Carroll. Ken Carroll, Ken Carl, call it what you will. It is one of my favorite parts of town, and today we're gonna be exploring it, and I'm gonna be sharing with you guys three reasons why I think this is one of the best spots to consider living in 2023. Stay tuned. Right. So as I said, guys, today we're going to be exploring Ken Carroll. It's one of my favorite parts of Denver on the southwestern side. But before we get started, again, my name is Adam Lang, I'm a licensed real estate agent. All my info is down here below. Reach out. We'd love to connect with you, learn a little bit more about you know why you might be considering moving here to Denver, Colorado. And hopefully I can share some of my 40 years of experience calling the Mile High City home. So look forward to connecting. Also, before we get started, make sure you guys hit that like and that subscribe button. Every week I release new videos different types of videos exploring Denver, different parts of town, lots of good value for you if you're considering moving here. So make sure you hit that like and that subscribe button as well. But for today, let's get started. Ken Carroll, let's go. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So once again, sharing three of my favorite parts or aspects of the Ken Carroll neighborhood. Again, this is in the Southwestern portion of Denver. So let's get started. First and foremost, number one, it's just going to be that scenic natural beauty and the outdoor recreational activities that are available in Ken Carl. So this is something that is very unique to this area and definitely one of my favorite aspects of Ken Carl. So there are lots of things I can go into about here, but number one, it's all of these private trails. So Ken Carl is a uh, development that from the very beginning had outdoor natural environment in mind when it came to where they placed the homes, where they developed the different communities. They did a great job with just really being very thoughtful and diligent about maintaining that open space and that natural outdoor environment throughout the entire community. So there are tons of trails and the trails are really cool because they are restricted and only available for people that live within Ken Carroll. They used to have a, a lot of people that didn't live in the neighborhood would just come in and walk their dogs and just uh, take advantage of the trail system. Over the last, you know, maybe 10 years or so, they've gotten a lot more strict about that. So now they require residents to have a little badge or some sort of ID on them just because there are people occasionally patrolling just to, again, ensure that this is restricted just to property owners, which if you live in there is great. So very, um, you know, very private, not that many people on the trails, great for mountain biking, as well as just walking and hiking, lots of red rock formations, great views of the foothills. Even you have some uh, locations where you can see downtown Denver. The Denver Tech Center, just a really beautiful area and a great perk for living within Ken Carroll. So that'll be the first part of it is these trails. Again, right out your back door if you live within the community. And then also the other part of this is just the wildlife. So I have uh, some family that have lived in this neighborhood for quite some time, and they always have stories to share about just the latest uh, wildlife encounter that they had. So you know, on a daily basis, they've got elk, or excuse me, a deer in their backyard. At some point, some people even become maybe frustrated with them at times. You have to be a little bit more cautious and uh, careful about what kind of flowers and plants you're putting in your front yard. But there are, you know, tons of very friendly uh, deer and even in some cases, bear. So as of last week, my aunt actually had talked about this, how there was a bear spotted in their neighborhood. He was just walking right down the middle of the road was hanging out in their front yard for a while. Neighbors were, you know, taking pictures of him and still maintaining distance. But, you know, how often uh, do you get to see bear and, you know, deer and all this great wildlife and still live within Denver? So if you're somebody that likes the outdoors, really wants to be intentional about having a home where you still are, you know, enjoying fresh air, not very much light pollution, so you can still see the stars at night, and just having that peace and quiet and, you know, feel of being within the mountains or at least, you know, escaping from the, the craziness of Denver, you're able to do that very easily within Ken Carroll. And I think this is one of the best locations if, you, if that is something that's really important to you. So again, just the wildlife, this outdoor open space and just trail system and all of that aspect of Ken Carroll, along with just the proximity. So where it's located, just off of C-470, really close to Highway 285. So if you're not from Colorado and you're not too familiar with Highway 285, it's a really good resource for people that are still trying to get to the uh, mountains, but don't want to take I-70, potentially getting caught up in really bad traffic and just 
dealing with the, uh, you know, the parking lot that can exist if you're a weekend warrior trying to go up to ski or just go up for the weekend, you know, on a Friday afternoon or coming back on a Sunday. So Highway 285 is a great alternative if you do live in certain parts of Denver. And one of those being if you live down south or southwest, like in Ken Carroll. So it's nice and easy to access 285 with probably a five minute drive from most of the Ken Carroll neighborhood. And that allows you to get up into Conifer, uh, Buena Vista, and even take a back way into Breckenridge and some of the other ski resorts. So I used to live in Aspen and this would frequently be a way that I would come down from Aspen back down to Denver and completely avoid I-70, not even have to put your uh, car on I-70 at any point during the entire drive. Really nice alternative. And if you're a hiker, if you're somebody that likes to uh, get into some adventure and try and uh, summit some of the 14ers in Colorado, so that's any mountain that's over 14,000 feet in elevation, you have some great accessibility off of Highway 285 to get up to the collegiate peaks. There's four of them. They're some of the best 14ers, in my opinion, in the state. Really good views, not super technical, but still an adventure. Definitely not the easiest of all the 54 14ers, but definitely some of my personal favorites. And you also have great easy accessibility to Mount Elbert, which is actually the tallest of all the 14ers within Colorado. So just a little side note there. So again, guys, proximity to the mountains, great trail system, and just outdoor opportunities with mountain biking and hiking within the community. And on top of that, some amazing wildlife. So all of that said, that's number one. Let's go right out into number two. So the second reason why I think this is such a great place is the strong sense of community and just that quality of life that you get if you're living within Ken Carroll. So lots of community here. You know, lots of families have been here for a significant amount of time. It is such a popular place that is very rare that homes turn over. A lot of people that moved into this neighborhood back in the 90s are now having kids that are grown up. They're going off to college or they're potentially even graduated college and now they're having families. So you do start to see right around now in the, the 2015 to today, 2023, now you're starting to see that turnover where a lot of these homes, people are downsizing, they're empty nesters, and they're you know looking for homes that maybe are a little bit smaller in size and also probably a little bit less on maintenance. A lot of the homes in Ken Carroll are larger and they also have larger lots. So there is a little bit more um, you know yard work and just upkeep for some of the homes in this neighborhood. So again, because of the turnover, um, there are some homes now starting to become available. But what I wanted to really talk about here is because people have lived in this community for so long, they have really built up a strong you know, sense of community. Lots of really good activities in the summertime, really nice 4th of July parade, different uh, pickleball and tennis tournaments, um, really good outdoor um, volunteer work being done just with maintaining all the streets and just the trail systems. So just a lot going on when it comes to interacting with your neighbors and building up that friendship with your community. I will also say that there are um, some really good opportunities in the Manor House. So within King Carroll, there's a place called the Manor House. It was built way back in the early 20th century. It's this beautiful architectural um, building. It's white, it looks very um, like a manor. And uh, they have lots of other things going on up there, you know, weddings, um, you know, private events, but also a lot of um, really good opportunities for the community to get together up there. And again, just network and get to know each other. So. Manor House is being within Ken Carroll. It is um, definitely taking advantage of a lot. People really like to utilize this as a space to meet up and uh, enjoy. So look at look up the Manor House and take a look for yourself at how cool of a location it has up on this kind of a hill uh, overlooking all of the Ken Carroll Valley. So I also will say that uh, because we are in a neighborhood in Ken Carroll that's a little bit off the beaten path, with that, there's positives and negatives. I'll start off with the negative. One negative would be not quite the level of public transportation options that you'd find if you were in a suburb closer to Denver, downtown Denver. You don't, you're not going to have light rail. You're not going to have some of those amenities or just opportunities to take you know, a bus or anything directly from your house. You would have to get down from the main part of Ken Carroll back down to C-470. And from there, you'll have some opportunities at that point. But with not having that one perk or benefit, you're not going to have nearly the amount of people panhandling you know, asking for change, the homelessness, some of those unfortunate things for the people, obviously, but also just for the property values and just having a little bit of a negative impact on some of these communities. You don't have any of that in the Ken Carroll neighborhood because it is a little bit, again, detached from the rest of the world and the rest of Denver. So I think that is one really nice thing about Ken Carroll is you do kind of get into an area that's very peaceful, again, with the outdoor 
open space and just the lack of lights at night. So you have a ton of stargazing opportunities and you just feel like you really are in a completely different area, even though you are within a 20 to 20 to 30 minute drive to downtown Denver. So I really do think that that's a big thing to keep in mind if that's important to you. And then guys, number three, third and final thing I want to talk about for a second is just the location of Kim Carroll and just the property values. So one of the biggest topics or one of the most important things to always keep in mind with real estate is supply and demand. So obviously with the more supply you have, you know, most likely that means that the demand is gonna be a little bit diminished because you have so much inventory. On the flip side, when we talk about physical real estate, so physical land, actual land, that's also a finite resource. So there's a limited amount, a limited supply. With Ken Carroll, what makes that even more amplified is that you're in an area that borders mountains and is very finite with where they can continue to build. So there aren't many opportunities for King Carroll to expand, especially in the North Ranch side of King Carroll, the Western side of C470. And because of that, the homes that are currently there are again, in limited in numbers. And because of that, they're always gonna have a high level of interest and demand because they have such a special amount of features that go along with it, with its location. So again, I think that's one of the biggest things when you look at properties within Denver, obviously there's certain parts of Denver where it can, it can continue to expand over time, especially if you're on the Eastern side of Denver. However, if you're on the Western side of Denver, that goes for Lakewood, Wheat Ridge, Golden, Applewood, some of those neighborhoods on the Western side of Denver. That's one of its biggest perks in my opinion is again, that there's not the ability to continue to expand as much as other places. And with that is going to increase the property values or if nothing else, make it a lot more stable and safe investment when it comes to where you're looking at purchasing. So location, 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 that's the first part of this. And then also with the pro back to the property values, these homes, you know, they definitely have been at the higher end of property values within Littleton, within just Southwestern Denver. And another reason for that is the size of the lots. So we've got very large, you know, properties within King Carroll, both in the square footage of the home itself, but also in the lot size. So a lot of the homes in the North Ranch are a half acre. A lot of them are very flat. Most of them, I'd say over half back up to open space. So you just have these extra little unique characteristics that really set it apart from almost any of the you know other communities within the Southwestern area of Denver, like you know, Littleton, there's a lot of other areas that are newer communities that have been built in the last 10 to 20 years. With those, a lot of times they're kind of cookie cutter. They're stacked on top of one another. They're small quarter acre lots or even smaller in some cases. And you just don't have that same privacy, that same just feel that you get with a house that has that extra bit of land and provides that privacy and that limited amount of exposure with neighbors. And just really gives you that, in my opinion, one of the most important things about a home, just feeling that level of comfort and just feeling relaxed and just enjoying being at your house. So again, location, property values, I think those are something else that really make Ken Carroll a strong investment and one of the favorite areas within Denver for, for my, in my opinion. So again, guys, really uh, interesting place to visit. If you haven't been here before, let me know, hit me up. I'd love to take you for a drive and show you some of the specific areas that I've been talking about in this video. But again, just to recap, three reasons why I really think Ken Carroll is worth considering if you're moving to Denver, Colorado, Number one, just that wildlife, the natural beauty that it awards all of its residents here, the outdoor recreational activities, such as the mountain biking and hiking on all those private trails. So that's number one. Number two, just talking for a second about that strong sense of community and just the quality of life that you get in an area that is a little bit more detached from the craziness of Denver. And then third and final, the third reason why I really think this is such a great place is that location and the property values. So easy accessibility to, to the mountains in a very limited supply and demand, going back to that finite place when it comes to land and uh, just an amazing part of the city of Denver and part of the state of Colorado to choose to call home. So um, again, guys, feel free to reach out to me at any time. My name is Adam, licensed real estate agent here in Denver, Colorado. Love connecting with people like yourselves and finding a few different ways that I can hopefully provide some value and help you in your home search, considering your uh, move to the Mile High City, Denver, Colorado. Hit that like and that subscribe button. Release videos every single week, just like this one. Reach out. We'd love to connect. And until next week, I'll see you then. Bye.